Hello friends, today I'm going to be telling you the fascinating story of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. It was the second largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century, but the biggest was in Alaska and was this was before air travel in the early part of the 20th century, and there was just no impact from that one, whereas this one was close to a major metropolitan area, and it did a real number on the area. Pinatubo was 20 times bigger than Mount St. Helens. That's how large it was, and a lot of people in America they just didn't have a connection with the Philippines, and they didn't really know anything about this fascinating and terrifying eruption. There were some people that lived on the mountain themselves, called the Ita people, and they were Aboriginal people who worshipped the mountain. They had been up there and they saw uh, bright lights and flashes of lights, and it really disturbed them. And for some reason, they decided to tell a nun who was working with the people. And she was terrified by this, and she convinced one of the ladies that was a member of the tribe to come down and talk to the people at the volcanic center near Manila. And they were impressed with what she said, and they decided to take a helicopter up to check things out. And they went up there, and as you can see, Pinatubo is not a particularly volcanic-looking mountain. In fact, actually, most people didn't even know that it was a volcano. It had not erupted in over 500 years. But they took these helicopters up to the top. This is where it is in connection with uh, Manila. This is Manila. And they saw lots of steam vents coming up. So they were on high alert after this. And then they started getting more earthquakes and things, and the people decided, you know, this is getting a little bit out of hand for what we can do with our equipment and our expertise. So they called in the troops from the United States. The people came in from the United States with all their equipment, and they started monitoring things, and there were earthquakes happening many, many, many times an hour. And they knew something was coming up. So they decided that if things kept progressing, they were gonna have to plan for an evacuation. Well, the problem with this is they would have to convince people that this volcano that had not erupted in 500 years was capable of doing something really bad. Well, the f final straw in this whole thing was when there was a major earthquake that occurred in the region. Now, let me tell you about this region. This is a region that had over a million people living near it. And it was also within 15 miles of Pinatubo was Clark Air Force Base, which was I think the second largest Air Force Base in the, of the United States in the world outside of the U.S. This was a major operation. So they decided to evacuate a million people. And not only that, they had to evacuate Clark and fly out all the planes and all that stuff. So this was a huge deal. Well, just about a week after this evacuation, they had an enormous ash cloud. So it sort of vindicated their um, decision to make everybody go. One week after the ash cloud eruption was when the major earthquake occurred, which was on June 12th. And there was a boiling, very fast boiling, 25 mile high cloud that pretty much just shot up in the air. Rocks were falling on places 30 miles away. They had um, an enormous sound eruption from this volcano when it blew. But the thing that's really strange to me, this really stuck out to me, the sound from this volcano, and some of these things can be so big you can hear them a thousand miles away. 
it went straight up into space. And so only the Martians could hear it. We could not hear it at all. There started being these pyroplastic flows that started coming down the mountain. They were 1,500 degrees going at 100 miles an hour. And they came right up to the edge of Clark Air Force Base. They had total darkness over an area of 250 miles wide for two whole days. This is a scary thing. And they had lahars. Now, lahars are very interesting, and I'll be showing you pictures of them later. They were actually the cause of the greatest destruction here. And they were, this area is an area of high precipitation anyway, between 80 and 100 inches a year. But right at the same time that Pinatubo erupted was a huge tropical storm that came in. It was just dumping all this stuff. So these lahars started coming down, which were over 50% mud and rock at 30 miles an hour. And they kept coming for years because of the high rainfall and the amount of ash that was dumped on this region. The biggest cause of death, there were only 350 people who died because of the evacuation, specifically just from the volcano. But a lot of people died because, you know, I said the rainfall was coming down and they had it was pulling all of the ash out. And all this stuff dumped on the top of buildings. And because of that, the roofs of the buildings started to collapse. And that's where most of the people died. Over 800 people died because of that. It was a very horrible one-two punch from the tropical storm and the volcano. But because of human intervention, very few people were killed in an area with over a million people. And this was a very deadly volcano. All of the Ita people who had been up on the mountain, they all escaped with their lives. Now, the final thing that's very interesting about Pinatubo, which I will show you pictures of in a little bit, is when it erupted, it blew all the top off of this mountain. And what was left was a volcano crater that was one and a half miles wide and 2,000 feet deep. Very interesting. And people go visit it all the time now. It's on the scale of Crater Lake. This is a massive volcano. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures and talk with you a little bit about it.
Discretion is advised. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.